Thank you. A couple very uh, hard acts to, to follow there. And just good evening, everybody, and, and thank you for having me. My name is Ryan Stewart, and I work at the school district of Philadelphia. Um, so I'm both very um, humbled and, and, and honored to, to present here at Fast Forward. Uh, especially, it's, it's kind of ironic that I, I work at a school district, and, and school districts are, are rarely known for being either fast or forward. And so, <laughs> hopefully, um, at, the, at the district, we're, we're, gonna, uh, we're well on our way to, to changing that. Um, tonight, I'm going to talk to you mainly, my presentation focuses on school design. So, as most of you know, and most of you in this room probably experienced, we've been designing the teaching and learning experience in our schools to look and function this way for decades with very little change. And it should be surprising to very few of us, we see very little change in the results that we get from that. Um, it doesn't work for a lot of our kids. So it depends on which metrics you care most about, um, whether it's the one on the left, which is our reading, standardized test reading scores, or the one on the right. In either case, if we're not reaching, if we're not intentionally designing schools that will meet the needs of those stick figures in gray or that student with his head on his desk, we're going to lose those kids. But in Philadelphia, we're blessed to be around a city that has educators who are talented and bright and innovating all the time, whether it's writing books, starting nonprofits, founding companies that are really pushing the envelope about how we're educating and, and meeting the needs of our kids. But as a district, we don't have a, a process for harnessing that kind of energy. So take the example of a local high school that wanted to use technology to redesign the classroom experience. And in order to do that, they had to go it alone. Everything from researching the best practices to procurement and IT coordination to just getting the permission to do it. But it doesn't have to be that way. We can change the way in which we engage. And if we think differently about how we take the energy and the ideas and the passion that are out there and put in place the process and support systems that are necessary to get those energies and those ideas into our classrooms to affect the day-to-day -day teaching and learning, then we can harness the new ideas, use that talented energy to engage our communities in new ways for new purposes. Because we know that we are in a city that has no shortage of talent, no shortage of passion, no shortage of great ideas. As a school district, it's incumbent upon us to really be intentional about identifying those people and leading them so that they can bring in the kinds of innovations that are going to reach our kids in the ways in which we need to be teaching them and having them learn. And as we think about our action plan, strategic plan moving forward, this is directly in line with our goal for this to be a key component and how we ensure that there's high quality and diverse set of schooling options throughout our city that we're empowering our best and brightest to lead and that innovation becomes a core part of our organizational DNA. So this summer we launched the school redesign initiative and we put out to our teachers, educators, school leaders and parents the opportunity to research, develop and propose a way for them to reimagine the teaching and learning process for those schools and to give them the time, resources, and support that they will need to bring those ideas into implementation in the school building. And we've, as a district, have engaged in many school improvement efforts over the past and have intentionally tried to build off of what we've learned so we can have an innovation that builds off of past failures but also charts a new course for how we leverage the talents of our city in service of school improvement. Now we're very early in this process, we're only a few months in, but we have some really encouraging signs, both from our parents, our teachers, and our school leaders, and from our community and professional partners. We're seeing a heightened sense of engagement, enthusiasm, and, and creative activity around what their schools can be. Because we like to imagine when I'm five years from now and I'm presenting at Fast Forward 2019, which is a shameless plug for another invite, <laughs> Instead of talking about just two schools or five schools that have redesigned their instructional experience for a different way of engaging in teaching and learning, we're talking about 50, 60, 100 schools that remake the way we think about teaching and learning fundamentally and that provide every student, teacher, and parent with the kind of school that they want, need, and deserve, the kinds of schools where the instruction is personalized, where youth development matters, where there's a strong mission-driven purpose and culture where talent is nurtured so that every teacher is engaged in an intellectually stimulating, supporting, and challenging environment, 
where families and communities aren't just welcome in the school, but their, their active and ongoing participation is a key and foundational element of the school's success, and where everybody's constantly thinking about how we get better and constantly looking towards how do we reach our kids in the ways that we need to. So when we think about what's next, I'll be able to tell you a lot more in a week because applications are due tonight. But what might come out of this? Might we see schools that change their traditional curriculum so the foundation is student exploration or student participation in the arts, performing and visual? Might we see out of this initiative schools that, that completely rethink what the structure of the school building and school data looks like? taking away walls, rethinking how technology and flexible uses of space, people, and time create a new way in which students, parents, and teachers engage in the process of learning and the process of connecting with our vast knowledge that's out there. Might we see schools that, that, build, that focus on building, both the, the engineers that will uh, build our, our next great inventions and the entrepreneurs who will build our, our companies that will power our our economy, Philadelphia's economy into the future. And might we see uh, out of this process new partnerships between our high schools and colleges and community colleges and universities so that students are getting university credit. And might we see uh, schools that decouple learning from the physical side of the school building so that our best classrooms are lab, laboratory partnerships and community service. And Terrifyingly, might we see something that we haven't thought of before, either out of this round of an initiative or out of a future round of an initiative, something that we can't imagine right now, but when we implement it, makes a huge difference in the lives of students, the lives of teachers, and the lives of communities who depend on that. Because what might happen if we have an ongoing and continuous commitment to this type of innovation? So in um, a month from today, We'll know a lot more about what's next for Philly, and you can see those schools in September. And who knows, next time we launch this initiative, maybe your names will be on a proposal. Thank you. <laughs>